Check, check. Right, good morning, everyone. Good morning to our online students as well. Uh, all right, let's just begin this time with a word of prayer. So I'll leave this time open. Any one of us can please lead in prayer. Go ahead. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for bringing us here today, Heavenly Father, to learn, Heavenly Father. Help us to learn about your word, have better understanding of your word, Heavenly Father. And uh, please help us to learn more new things from uh, Pastor Paul, Heavenly Father. And thank you very much for getting us all here today, Heavenly Father. Bless us all those, bless all those who are present here today for your class, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, the man can just push this a little back. All right. So last week, uh, we've been talking about what Jesus foretells on the cross. And we looked at the wisdom of the cross. Um, the wisdom of the cross, we looked at substitution, what God did for man. And with the first Adam and the second Adam. Right. Uh, then we looked at uh, one man's obedience and how that one man's obedience and uh, you know what the first Adam did and what the last Adam did and what did Jesus achieve through all of that. And very importantly, we looked at um, the substitution, which is the divine exchange, right? The divine exchange of of the blessings that came through the cross, right? Uh, and then we looked at atonement, uh, which is you know in the Old Testament we saw that uh, uh, you know once in a year the high priest would go into the holy of holies and. Uh, make that sacrifice. But here what Jesus did was he made atonement for. He did it once for all. You don't have to go year after year. Sorry, uh, I think the video is blur. Uh, Vimal, can you just uh, check the video? It's. I, I did that. I did that. Still uh, blur. Let's see. No, you've got to. Yeah, but it's blur again. Uh, is the video all right? OK, now it's better. OK. All right, so we stopped at, uh, you know, we also did the two legal imputations. Now we looked at the word imputation, right? What is imputation? Right? Something that is imputed on you. You don't really deserve it, but it's imputed. It's just given. Right? So we look at the example, remember, when a believer or a person from another faith, he becomes a believer. What happens? The moment he becomes a believer, righteousness, justification, holiness, all of it is imputed on him. But him or her, she doesn't even, he doesn't even know that all that is imputed. It's just been given. Right? Uh, yeah, so it's saying that the video is still blurred. No, I keep doing it. This one. Okay, just hold on, right, please. Okay. I hope it's better now. Right? You may need to raise it up a little bit, yeah. OK. Yeah, that should do. OK, so we stopped at redemption. Now, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you say redemption? Online students as well can join in. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you say redemption? Second chance. Second chance, OK. What else? Brought back. OK, good one. What else? Saved, OK? Free from sin, all right. Now, all of them are right, right? Uh, the word redemption simply means, um, you know, for example, you go to a supermarket, right? You buy some things, and then they give you these gift coupons, right? So the gift coupons say, next time when you purchase anything from here, you have a 500 rupee off. Right, 500 rupees is off. All you need to do is show this coupon. 
right? So you go the next time, maybe the next month, you buy your groceries and all of it, and then you have your coupon. Now it is your choice to redeem the coupon or not to redeem it. Now, if you redeem the coupon, what's going to happen? If the bill, if your entire bill is 5,000 rupees, you will get a deduction of 500 rupees because you have redeemed your coupon. Right? Now, the word redemption means to bring back to original state. Right? To bring back to original state. What was our original state? If you look at Adam, what was his original state? There was, was there any sin in him? In Adam? There was no sin. Where God himself walked with Adam, taught them everything. They didn't even know they were naked. Why? Because there was no sin. Right? Now, after the sin, their eyes were open. And now, you know, life just continued, right? But through the cross now, we are redeemed back to what Adam was before he sinned. Right? That means now in, in the, when Adam was walking in the garden, God was there with them, right? There was no sin. So now after the cross, because of the cross, you and I are like walking with God. What does the Bible say? Christ in me, the hope of glory. Right? The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God living in us. And we are the temple of God. So you see that redemption? Right? The old covenant, when Adam was without sin, God was walking with Adam. There was no separation from God. After sin, there was separation. But here, after the cross, now there's no more separation. We are redeemed back, brought back to the position that Adam had before the fall. Right? So let's look at your notes. Um, because of the fall, we came into subjection to sin, Satan, and death. The court of heaven could not legally release us from this bondage. Why? Because the price has, uh, needs to be paid. The price for sin is called the ransom. Right now, for murderer, murder somebody. Right, and after murdering somebody, he goes back home and he becomes a believer. He says, Lord, forgive me, I've done something wrong. But the police come, catch him, and take him to the court. What's going to happen? Will the judge say, Okay, you know, you believe in Jesus, so you're free to go? No, you have to pay the price for the sin right and that is what jesus did for us in the court of heaven sin needed to be dealt with sin had to be there need to be a sacrifice and that is what jesus did and so now the ransom the price has been paid right and so we can be set free christ gave us his life as a ransom for sin and this is for everyone. Matthew 20, 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life for a ransom for many. Right? So basically, if you're going back to that court where the judge is sitting there and he's saying, but you're a murderer. The, the person says, yes, I know I'm a murderer, but now uh, I'm sorry for it. And now I know I've done something very wrong. And can you please forgive me? The judge is going to say, I forgive you. It's good that you know your mistakes. It's good that you have confessed your sins. It's good that you've become a believer in Jesus. But who will pay the price for the life that has lost, that you have killed? You get me somebody else, and you're free to go. But the price, 25 years in jail, example, right? 25 years. Somebody has to pay that price. Only then I can let you go. So basically the court is happening there. Before the judge hits the hammer, gives the uh, you know, sentence, Jesus comes there and he says, okay, I will go. 25 years 
I'll go, let this man go free. We're looking at Jesus and saying, I'm sure you want to do this because I, I did the wrong, I did the mistake. He said, You didn't do anything wrong. No, but I'll do it for you. But 25 years, you'll stay in jail for 25 years for the mistake that I made? Yeah, I'll stay. Jesus was not just willing for 25 or 30 years. He gave his life as a ransom. He said, hey, John 3.16, I love the world so much. I gave my son. I gave, he gave his life. What if the uh, judge says, okay, actually, now because you've done this, there's a plea to have you killed. You should be executed. It's not like Jesus is going to say, no, 25 years is okay. Uh, but uh, since you have to be executed, then you go forward. No. Jesus is still willing and saying, okay, let him go, and I'll do it for him. Why did he do that? After he does that, now this person who's a murderer can walk out of that court justified. Can you picture that? So you're just two minutes back, he's in that podium there. This death sentence was upon him, but he can walk out of that court and just be a normal person in society, go back to his standing to where he was. Why? Because of what Jesus did. And that is what is redemption, to write off a debt, to write off something that somebody has done, but another person pays the price. And <clears throat> After being redeemed, what did Jesus do for us? He didn't say, okay, now I've redeemed you, go live your life. No. What did he do? He, After redeeming us, he purchased us and he glorified us. Right? What is the meaning of glorify? We, we always talk about this, no? In the new covenant, we'll have glorified bodies. Right? He glorified us. He, his, his glory was upon us. Right, um, the ransom was not something paid to Satan, because God doesn't owe Satan a ransom. God owes Satan nothing. Why was the ransom made? It was not like the devil and Jesus were sitting and okay, let's come to a prison. Let's come to an agreement now. You, yes, you tempted, uh, you know, Adam and Eve. You did that. Now. Let's come to an agreement. So I'll send my son. He'll die on the cross. But after that death, you, you have to be defeated. Is that OK with you? You should not come and cause trouble anymore in this. No. There was no agreement between God and the devil. The devil had nothing to do with this. God didn't want to prove any point to the devil. In his mind, on the cross, we talked about this, right? It was not, okay, I'm going to crush the devil. No. In his mind was you and me, his creation. And out of that came the victory that defeated the enemy. Right? Hebrews 9.14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself to, go with, to offer to himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works, to serve the living God. His death was the price paid to buy, ransom, or redeem. Now you and I have been bought from this place of curse, from this place of death. And now we are bought into this place of righteousness. Right? We are redeemed from the bondage of sin and an empty way of life, as 1 Peter 1.18 from the present evil and from the powers of darkness. Isn't this powerful? Right? We are redeemed, which means we are brought away from the powers of darkness, from the works of the devil. Right? Now, the devil is going to come. The devil will bring accusations. The devil will bring temptations. That's part of life. But you and I are brought back. We are purchased. We are glorified. First thing the enemy say, hey, you can't do this. 
or he'll bring temptation in any way. He knows our weak spots. So he tries to bring temptations. What is the choice we have? One, we can either overcome those, not by our own strength, but by our standing here, by saying, hey, I'm redeemed. I'm purchased by blood. I'm no longer in, in, in bondage. I'm no longer in the enemy's territory. So we can overcome. Revelations talks about it, right? We overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Right? So that's a choice. Everyone has a choice. Now, Jesus set the example, right? He was tempted. He set the example. What did he do? He used the word of God. Now we have an additional bonus, right? The blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So we use both of them. We can never say, oh, I could not overcome. Now, there will be times we may get upset. There will be times we get angry. We may get irritated. We may get, you know, especially when we're working or uh, things that we're doing. All this is natural. But it's very important that we set our life back right on track. Right? I'm not saying that we don't get angry, we don't get upset. Right? We do. Right? There are times, there are days things will go very well. There are days things won't go well at all. Right? But it, it's all up to us how we look at it. Right? So we can say, God, things are not going right today. Everything's going wrong. We started the bike. It's a puncture. I'm going on the road, and then there's a problem here. It's too much of traffic. Everything is going wrong, Lord. So, so our attitude towards those uh, really matter. How do we look at those situations? How do we look at those problems? Right? So we are, we, are we looking at it at, in the eyes of God and saying, okay, God, I'm getting angry. I'm getting upset, Lord, but help me to overcome this. Right? Because we are no longer allowing the enemy. Because when we allow the enemy to take one step, he'll come and he'll take the entire room. Right? So get rid of him. Get rid of the things of the enemy. Right? Redemption teaches us that God desires so much to restore me from the fall that he himself would pay a great price to make it possible. So you and I can boldly boldly pray, boldly expect healing, deliverance, expect the blessings of God. Boldly we can do it. Right? One of the things that the enemy does, you know, is he, he brings these accusations during times when you and I need to minister to people. I don't know if it's happened to you, but it's happened. Right? Many times, uh, you know, um, when we've gone either on missions, we've gone, especially when we go to North India, we do our short term Bible college and all of that. So, you know, we'll be ministering. Sometimes the enemy brings the things that, you know, areas where we have failed. See, you did this. See, you did this. How can you teach? Right. And then many times, you know, there are uh, people who are possessed, they come for prayer. Right. And then the enemy says, How can you? You know, pray for this demon possessed person. No, you did this wrong. You did that wrong. And he tries to suppress us. He tries to, you know, the enemy tries to make us weary. He attacks our mind. And he allows, and if we allow the mind to work, we will not be able to do what, because he knows. If we know our identity, if we know our authority in Christ, he knows that the demons will have to flee. He knows it. right? It's, it's, it's not something that he doesn't know. In the name of Jesus, demons will flee. In the name of Jesus, there's authority. So he knows it. But he doesn't want you and me to use that authority, to know that authority. And he say, bring accusations. How can you do this? You're too young. You're too old. You, you didn't do this right. You don't know anything from the Bible. You haven't prayed. You haven't worshipped. You haven't done this, 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 this. Right? And then we feel, oh, yeah, I haven't done it. So maybe somebody else can pray for this person. What's happening? 
you're al we are allowing the enemy to take control but the same case what we can do is you can say you know if somebody is coming for prayer whether it's healing whether it's deliverance whatever it is then the devil says hey you didn't do this you didn't do this you tell the devil hey i don't have to answer you because god didn't answer you god didn't pay the price uh, you know there was it was nothing that he had to owe you so right now i'm not doing it by my own strength i know i am weak i know there are things in me that needs to be changed but i'm doing it in the name of jesus so that will not change that remains the same do you know your uh, uh, just because i've sinned doesn't mean i'm not part of god's kingdom it doesn't mean i'm not god's child the word says if you're faithful and just he will forgive your sins when you declare this the enemy knows oh he knows so you're standing in authority right? so whether it is one demon whether it is thousand demons whether it is four thousand demons doesn't matter what did jesus do when he got into gerasenes that you know, off the boat legion the demon possessed person who was legion but four thousand demons inside him what did he do he came and fell at jesus's feet said, don't don't let me you know don't torture me before my time is up what did Jesus do? He just delivered him. Get out. That was again a deposit of what we can do after the cross. Right? So we know, we must know our identity in God. Next one, the one for many, Romans 5 14 through 21. Yes, there's a powerful chapter. It's that one for where it talks about the exchange. Maybe one of us can read that. Romans 5, 14 through 21. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses, even over who had not sinned in the likeness of the offense of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the transgression, for it by the transgression of the one the many died much more did the grace of god and the gift of by the grace of the one man jesus christ abound to the many the god the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned for on the one hand the judgment arose from one transgression resulting in condemnation but on the other hand the free gift arose from the many transgressions resulting in justification for it if by the transgression of the one uh, death reigned throughout the one much more the, those who receive the abundance of grace of and the gift of the righteousness will reign in life through the one jesus christ so then as through one transgression there resulted condemnation to all men even so through one act of righteousness there has resulted justification of life to all men for as through the one one man's disobedience the many were made sinners even so through the obedience of one the many will be righteous the law came in so that the transgression would increase but where sin increased grace abundance all the mo more so that as sin reigned in death even so grace would reign through righteousness to eternal life through jesus christ our lord yeah. thank you Vijay. Now, this portion of scripture, Romans 5, uh, this exact portion is also called the reversal, right? Uh, it's called the reversal. Now, what's happened there? We've gone through this before. Let's go quickly. One man was disobedient. Many became sinners. Are we sinners? We were born in sin. One man was obedient. Many became righteous. Are we righteous? It's called the reversal. Look at the next one. One man sinned, death passed in to many. God did not design death. Because of Adam, death came into this world. But one man was sinless, many received life. So beautiful, right? You think of this whole reversal. Think of how God undid what the devil did 
devil said i will do this jesus god said i will do this now try to beat this now can the devil do anything now he can he will bring temptation he uses all his you know he blinds people's eyes he there's lots that he is doing but this he cannot reverse he can never reverse this right one man's disobedience <clears throat> judgment passed on many one man's obedient many may wed righteous one man sinned many became slaves one man was obedient many were made to reign in life one man sinned many lost sonship one man was obedient many regained sonship you see that beautiful beautiful reversal how god just turned the tables around and the best part of this entire story is that god knew it from the beginning from the beginning he knew it paul says christ crucified before the foundations of the world it was already set it was in place that's why we sing no god you are you're almighty you know the uh, when you read the book of jeremiah you read the book of psalms and isaiah it talks about his mighty hand the rivers of kadesh tremble the 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 trees of lebanon they crack with the voice of the lord right and you and you think of this whole picture of of god when you read even the book of revelation revelation chapter 1 and this picture of jesus the glorified jesus now john is looking at this glorified jesus and he falls at his feet as if dead Imagine John. John is the same person who is putting his head on Jesus's shoulder every time. Wherever Jesus went, John was there. Now he's seeing Jesus, and he's fallen down as if dead. He's not saying, "Hey, Jesus, long time no see." Last time we had breakfast. After that, we didn't see each other. No, <laughs> that's the different Jesus. And different Jesus meaning that that's not the that's the human side of Jesus. But here, this is the glorified Jesus. This is God. He's gone back to from being a man. He's gone back to the Father to be God. You see the difference, right? And it's such a wonderful price that He has paid. So you and I can stand on all of this during our difficult times, right? Now the choice is up to us. the choice is up to us when we look at the world also there are people who don't believe in us but if they believe in this they have eternal life they have something which no other faith can give a personal relationship with god every other religion it is god it is man but here it is god and man on the same level why ephesians 1 you and i are seated together in heavenly places in christ jesus we are seated with him right now we are seated with him god has counted us worthy to send the holy spirit in us and it is god in us the same holy spirit it's in us he's counted us worthy right it's he's not saying you finish 2 years being a christian then i will send the holy spirit then i will send the gifts it's not saying any of that he's counted us worthy how much more must we be willing to do for him right it's a joy there, there there will be those challenges there will be difficult times but you pick up again you say god the joy of the lord shall be my strength right uh, especially those who are going back to north india even those here online serving in north india may get tough it may get really difficult persecutions may arise the enemy may cause so much of disruptions but we stand on these things the price has been paid the devil is already defeated all we are doing 
is expanding and lodging the kingdom of God. And, and there's great reward. I don't think there's any other reward greater than this. Right? When I was, you know, when I was working in the IT uh, sector, uh, there were a couple of promotions that was uh, on the way. Right? Good promotions. Uh, these promotions would, you know, um, uh, you know, just take my the career up really high. And then I put my papers down. Then you ask why? You know you're going to get this promotion. You know that with this promotion you can go global. You can go to different countries. You can your life is done. You can just you know do everything, and your work is you know it's it's not like you have to you know struggle and work hard. It's a good job. It's a good role. People like this role. I said, I'm not interested because my heart is somewhere else. So they asked me where, what you want to do. I said, Bible college. <laughs> Bible college. <laughs> they all started making fun. What kind of Bible college? What, what will you do with a Bible college? What will you do after that? What do you plan to be? I said, I don't know. But one thing I know is when I am part of, when I do something that gives me pleasure, gives me joy. That's much more than what is there in this world. And I'm glad I made that decision. Was it difficult? Difficult, yes. But it was joyful, very, very joyful, very rewarding. Right? So even each one of us, those online, uh, here, you know, wherever you're doing, whatever you're doing, do it with God in your eyes. Do it with say you know hey this is who i am this is what i am right you may be here maybe in different nations maybe joining the corporate sector or doing something that you like in arts and entertainment whatever it is let your eyes be on jesus right? and that's where you find reward amen okay let's go to the next chapter <clears throat> the power and the blessings of the cross now a lot of this may be very familiar, but let's just quickly go through it. Now, through the fall, mankind became a slave to sin and Satan. Sin and Satan gained mastery over the human race, right? And the power of the cross breaks the dominion of sin and Satan over our lives. Now, the cross is a powerful place, right? Now, just because the cross was done, it's not like it's the end of the story. We look later on what else is what else the cross did for us. With the cross, when we believe in the death, the burial, and resurrection of the cross, there are there is power and there is blessings. Right now, how many of us don't like blessings? All of us like blessings. How many of us don't like power? Right? All of us like power, like authority. Uh, you know, the, for me, the greatest joy is when I see people who are demon possessed you know, and they are delivered. Oh, it is such a joy for me. I feel like a lion sometimes. <laughs> you know, I just feel like, oh man, now God, you know, you just, just so much authority. Now you're hardly 60 kgs, but you're standing there, you know, and these devils are around, and you just know, hey. I'm more powerful than these fellows. You just know it. There's so much of authority. Right? And how do you feel? Like you feel like a lion and there's a rat in front of you. That's how you feel. But if you don't know your authority, we'll be the rat and that'll be the lion. Yes or no? Right? So we should know what we are. Right? You remember the enemy is like a, like a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. He's like a roaring lion. But Jesus is not like the lion of Judah. He is the lion of Judah. Right? The devil is, he masquerades like an angel of light. He's not an angel of light. Right? So remember that when we talk about the power and the blessings of the cross, power is something that is. Wonderful, right? Uh, when you look at these leaders and these great men and women, uh, not only in ministry but also in the corporate sector, you look at these huge, big businessmen, 
you know they globally they are worth you know powerful people right? worth billions right and you look at them it's it's you know you just know the aura the way they are you know they're not going to waste time right uh, there are people you know uh, there's this interview that I was uh, watching where this man interviews three billionaires okay like they came up from their own hands right it was not like inherited and they are just there no three billionaires and they asked them how did you do this right how did you you know become from nothing to a billionaire and all of them said i believed that there was power inside me but i was not being able to use it right it was all of them said that there is power there is something inside us that but then i was not able to identify that power and work in that power of course after all of that came the planning execution but they believed in themselves they didn't look at the society and say oh who's going to you know look at buy my products who's going to you know look at this you know i'm not doing a paid promotion here but i was, I was watching this thing by uh, amazon jeff bezos Right. Now, this is not a paid promotion. I'm just trying to bring out something here. They asked him in one interview in the early 1990s. Uh, the interviewer is asking, what is all this computer? And, uh, you know, you because, you know, it was only that time, early 90s, when the computers were beginning to be there in every house. People started buying using computer so this guy Jeff Bezos said now you can go online still internet was not too familiar at that time but you can go online and purchase things you can buy your clothes online you can buy things so the interviewer was asking what is this it's, it's, it's nonsense it's rubbish it doesn't make sense I'll go to the supermarket and buy it why should I buy online who's going to wait for this it doesn't make sense right and the interviewer was laughing because when he was, I don't know if you can find it on YouTube, he's laughing as, as Jeff Bezos is explaining, right? He's explaining, this is what you can do. You can check what you want, variety, sizes, and whatever you can. And this guy is laughing in the interview. Now I wonder where's that interviewer, right? But he knew at that time that something's going to happen in this. It's, it's vision, right? That is something that is bestowed on people. Now, when you look at the cross, you and I are bestowed with power, right? The power of the cross, the authority of the cross, right? Uh, and, and so this dominion, this bondage of sin, it grips us, right? If you look at people who are in drugs, addictions, porno, pornographic addictions, sexual morality, living in fornication. They're in bondage, suicidal, depression. They don't want to do it. Right? They don't want to be in it, but it's a bondage. Initially, they tried it. It's OK, once a while. OK, once in a month. OK, once in two weeks. OK, once a week. OK, twice a week. I'll stop whenever I want to. Then every day, what's happening? It comes a bondage. It's hard. It's, the devil has just, you know, he's just like taken this. This is the bondage. This is you. He's held you like this tight. You're trying to let go. You're saying, I don't want this. I don't want this. But the bondage has gripped you nicely. Right? But. When we believe in the cross, this bondage, the devil's grip is broken off. We're set free. Right? What, is the, what is the key here? We must believe. We must believe that the cross is able to break these bondages. Right? Yes, we can go. We need to do all the things that we have to do, um, rehabilitation, counseling, whatever that needs to be done. But that bondage, bondage must be broken. When you believe in the cross, that grip of the enemy is just broken off. Right? So 
this is something that the power of the cross does. In Adam, we were slaves to sin. In Adam, we came under the dominion of Satan. In the second Adam, Christ set us free from sin. And in the second Adam, sorry, the second Adam, Christ, we are set free from Satan's dominion over our lives. We are set free, right? If we live our identity in Adam, we live under the control of sin and Satan. If we live our identity in Christ, we live free from the dominion of sin and Satan. Right now, that's it. Remember, we talked about this whole thing of uh, reversal, right? The reversal scripture. It's very important to understand identification. And we've talked about this many times. What is identification? Is it in the mic? No. So the others can hear. Those online can share your thoughts as well. Thank you, Nina, for sharing your thoughts. Knowing who you are. Knowing who you are. Okay. Yes. What, is, what else? What do you think? That's right. What, what is identification? Yeah. So that is your basis. But just the word identification. Like in the natural, what is identification? I mean, to be known, okay, good. What else? Your photo and your name, your address. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Who we are actually. Right? Now we can have an identification card. And our date of birth will be something else. The photo can be somebody else's photo, especially in our nation. Those things are possible. The address is some other country. Right? Now, you can't show that identification and say, hey, this is my ID card, but everything is wrong in it. So you change it. No. The, you, know, you take it to the police or anything. You know, that's not going to work. If you have a car or a bike, and uh, when you're riding and driving, you, know, you you the police stop you for a check, and you show your registration number. You can't show your bike's registration uh, card for when you're driving. See, this is my bike's registration card, but right now I'm driving. The cop will say, what? I don't know all that. You show me the car registration. You identify this car, because I've caught you in the car. Don't tell me about your bike. Your bike is another story. Now you are here in this car. Identify this car. Show me the documents. Basically, identification is who we really are. Are we a pastor? Are we a prophet? Are we apostle? Are we evangelist? Teacher? Administrator? What are we? Is that our identification? Is that our identification? Cameraman, Vimal, media team, IT team. <laughs> what are we? What's our identification? Our identification, as uh, Prince said, is we are a child of God. And out of that identification comes everything else. Hey, I'm doing media. That's good. God has given me that gift. But what if somebody says, no more media for you? Go and clean the chairs. Every day you have to arrange chairs. What is, it? Oh, oh, what is this? But this is what I am, God. I'm a cameraman. I need to do camera only. That means we have based our identity. Vimal, it's not for you. <laughs> uh, that means we have based our identity being the cameraman. You get what I'm saying? Right? Now, what if I, okay, worship leader, hallelujah, every day we sing. And suddenly they say, no more leading worship for four years. You're all the worship team. You know, you have to just sit. You can 
take part in the worship, but you cannot be in the worship team. Oh God, and how will I worship you? <laughs> Without guitar, I cannot. How can I be somebody sitting there? That means what? Something's wrong. I base my identity as the worship leader. No, our identity is who we are in Christ as sons and daughters of God. Whether we are here on the pulpit, whether we are behind the pulpit, we are a child of God. That doesn't change. Now, Jesus did not die on the cross and say, okay, everyone should be use all your gifts, only then you are the child of God. No. He said it's imputed. Take it. And out of that comes the other things. right? So always, always be willing. You know, I love the book of Isaiah. He talks about it, right? Uh, many have known my works, and you, O oh God, are my reward. Right? So people will acknowledge, people will bless, people will ignore, people will uh, you know, not uh, acknowledge you. Your reward is from God. Right? So don't let these things take your identity. Right? It's good. It's important. We need it. But when you go to God, for example, when I go to God, I'm not going with a guitar. God, this guitar help me to lead worship. God will take the guitar and throw it away. And he'll say, you tell me, did you worship in spirit and in truth? So yeah, guitar is there. No? I'm not talking about guitar. I'm talking about, did you worship me in spirit and in truth? What is the answer we're going to give? Right? So that's who we truly are. Uh, Hebrews 20, 11, sorry, Hebrews 2, 10, 11, and 14. Let's just quickly read that before we take a break. Ten, eleven, and fourteen. For it was fitting for him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one. For which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren, say, saying. I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the assembly. I will sing praise to you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. In a search, in as much as then, as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through the death he might destroy him. Who had the power of death? That is the devil. Right. Thank you. Uh, just give me two minutes, right? And explain this, and then we'll go for a break. Now, identification. Jesus identified with his birth. Now, he, Jesus doesn't know how it is to be born as a son. He doesn't know how it feels, but he identified for us, right? So that we can be identified with his death, right? He identified with, with being born, being in this world as a human being. He identified it for us. He didn't have to do it, but he did it. Two, he became like unto us so that he could represent us on the cross. It was not like God made his mind and said, okay, Michael, the angel, go, go as a human being, or you're an angel now, you go to the cross, just, you know, they'll put two nails and one nail on your feet, finish it, and fly back up. That does not happen, right? Finally, in the mind of God, we were in him on the cross, right? What happened to Christ on the cross happened to you and me because we were in him. So when God is looking, he's saying, it's like he's putting the judgment and wrath on one person for you and me. So it's basically we all paid the price without paying the price. Right? We didn't have to go through the pain and difficulty, but he did it for us. Amen? Well, all right, let's take a break. We'll come back in 10 minutes.